think about from an overall factory management uh, perspective, uh, inventory management, material management is, is low hanging fruit for an AI deployment, right? Because it is one function uh, where you have to uh, basically ask a few f simple questions. You have to answer uh, what you're gonna buy, who you're gonna buy from, and how much of a specific thing you have to buy, right? And um, humans make those decisions today, right? And they base those decisions on a number of parameters, right? Uh, some of them are even, might be, unconscious, right, or a feeling about a supplier that's not doing very well and perhaps you're going to shift from one supplier to the next. Uh, so what AI can do is uh, to really rationalize that decision-making process by um, collecting a large number of input parameters from macroeconomics, uh, macroeconomic uh, influences, including, you know, uh, uh, the state of stock market or oil of a, uh, uh, the price of a barrel of oil, I, all the way to micro uh, economic factors within the factory, right? Uh, or uh, the status of a specific supplier that's giving you good or bad parts. So uh, I think one of the issues we have with AI today is that uh, it's being considered uh, a solution for every single problem. It's not. Uh, it's a very powerful uh, set of solutions for very specific problems. And uh, where AI excels is when you have a large number of inputs and, um, and where the complexity is such that you can't really program how those inputs are going to influence the output. Instead, as you said, you train that black box, right, the AI inventory management, material management, you train it to give you the proper outputs based on uh, a set of inputs. And um, you mentioned autonomous driving, I mean, Tesla collects a lot of our, uh, you know, when you drive your Tesla, it collects all this data, right, to train how humans uh, interface with the vehicle, interface with the environment, and uh, use that to train their AI algorithms for the self-driving uh, engine they have.